Hi, my name is George Lindemann. I'm doing a presentation called, Yeah, But We Don't Want That Water. It's about private sector investment in public water resources. Uh, I live in Miami Beach, Florida. I've been a full-time Florida resident for 25 years, but an off and on resident my whole life. I've lived in West Palm Beach as well as Miami Beach. I have four children ran ranging in age from 11 to 17. And um, as most Floridians, I'm very interested in the Everglades and the environment. I'm, I'm passionate about the environment. I'm passionate about art and I'm most passionate about my children and the physical world that, that people my age will leave to them. And so this is a story about this project in Southern Martin County, which is the county right above Palm Beach. It's a story about a 2,500 acre site that my partners I bought, developed, and what went right and what went wrong. When we all got involved in the project, we honestly didn't realize how emotional a subject water is. It's emotional internationally, obviously. We all read about wars that are fought over dams being built and water running out. But as someone who's always just turned the tap on and had very inexpensive, safe water pour out, it would have never occurred to me then then in, in a developed area like Florida, that water would engender such intense emotions and feelings. People who otherwise might behave rationally, behave irrationally when it comes to water. In retrospect, perhaps much of that is warranted. We all need water to live, but much of it is not warranted. And um, during this talk, we're gonna go through why that is and why that isn't. Private sector investment in infrastructure projects exists internationally. It's nothing new. The private and sector investments make some projects possible that otherwise would not have been possible. The government can't pay for everything we need. Non-water sectors like transportation, school construction, highways, for example, have, have taken off with public-private partnerships. Water has been late to the game. There are some examples, but less. I personally come from a background that I believe government can't solve every problem. Government can solve many problems, but not all of them. And the private sector and profit motive can be very helpful, um, not to eliminate government, but in certain instances to supplement what government can do. In the United States, these public-private partnerships are behind many other countries, certainly when it comes to water. I just picked a couple examples. I'm not an expert in these, although I've, I've followed them a little bit. Look at Israel, for example. Israel made a, a conscientious decision to seek private investments in infrastructure projects that were needed. And of course, Israel is in a very dry area. And so that includes water. Israel is currently uh, has its sixth public-private partnership desalinization plant under construction. They also have three alternative energy uh, PPP, public-private partnerships. Two of those are private partnerships. Uh, so far, although there's always naysayers, the projects are moving forward. Contrast that to what's happened here in Florida, um, there's the well-known Tampa Bay desalinization situation that was supposed to be a private sector investment in a public water project. But even though construction was underway and the design was not yet complete, the government decided to buy out the project from the private sector developer uh, because the, 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 the complaints were too, too strong and the politicians, that's what they decided they needed to do. The U.S. has lagged behind the rest of the world in, in encouraging this kind of strategy. Public-private partnerships are complicated. Private enterprise re 
requires certain things to move forward. So does the government. If you're going to invest in something risky, private enterprise requires a better return. They ask questions like, who is going to guarantee the return? Private enterprise requires quantifying risk. Investors want to know what could possibly go wrong. If you're going to invest in a biotech looking for a cure for cancer, there's a good chance that company won't come up with a cure. So for every dollar you invest, you require several hundred dollars in return. But if you invest in U.S. treasuries, which are guaranteed by the government, you might only expect in today's world a 1% return. Another thing uh, private enterprise likes is that both parties have skin in the game. They want to know that everybody has the same interest in mind and is working towards the, the same goals. And they also want to understand what share of the gain do the investors get and what share goes back to the government. These are all questions that need to get flushed out when trying to put together a contract for a public-private partnership. But what's important to remember here is that private sector investment is not privatization. Uh, in Florida, only the government and the people own water. Private enterprise cannot own water. However, there are water sources and utilities which are owned by the private sector. The nearest water source to Lake Point is a water utility which is privately owned. Um, I have a, a home in a small rural area in Tennessee. The local water utility is owned by a family that lives down the street and are, are very interested in taking care of it. So there are private water delivery sources in the United States, that part of the puzzle is nothing new. Any business venture, and certainly uh, any business venture that involves the government, has to have compelling features, compelling reasons to move forward. Lake Point fits that bill. Why is Lake Point so compelling? Really, in a nutshell, if you forget everything else, it's location, location, location. Lake Point is uniquely situated in the region. If you look at the map here, the little red dot is where Lake Point is. The property is 2,500 acres, and it's within a few hundred yards of Lake Okeechobee. It also is at the nexus of one of the region's most important canals, the L8. That's the arrow on the top of the page that is headed towards West Palm Beach. And then there's the other canal, the C44 or St. Lucie River. That's the lower arrow, red arrow, point, pointing towards Stewart. Our partners decided to purchase Lake Point the land had already been scheduled for development. It was to be a polo project. Prior to the polo project, the property was a citrus grove. Our partners bought it with the intention of building a public-private partnership with Martin County, the South Florida Water Management District, and ourselves. The property had a unique set of assets and existing permits. There was a culvert going to Lake Okeechobee there was pumps going into the C-44, and there was the unbuilt last link of the L-8 canal connecting to the C-44. Nowhere else in the region did this terrific location exist with these pre-existing water assets. The water district had tried to buy the property before our partners bought it, but they couldn't afford the purchase price and the building that would be required afterwards. That's when the concept of Lake Point became interesting. The idea was that the owners would mine the aggregate to the specifications of the water district. 
And after 20 years, those canals and retention ponds would be donated to the district. There was some upland environmentally sensitive areas which were to immediately be donated to Martin County for passive recreation. And in the end, the entire project would get donated to the water district. The project was referred to as a kidney because it was a transfer point. The water could go from the lake or from C-44 and down south to the LA. And that's what was most fascinating about this project. The district was most interested because they wouldn't have to buy the land nor build most of the project. The county was interested because it got the, the upland preserve. And at the time, the commissioners realized the importance of building out water projects. The Lake Point partners uh, began the permitting process. We had unanimous approval from the Martin County Commission and unanimous approval from the Water District. That's an important fact to please remember for later in this presentation. Both government bodies, after extensive discussion, voted unanimously to approve this project. The partners went forward then and began the process of getting all sorts of very complicated and intense permits. Some of them included a U.S. Army Corps permit, a Florida Department of Environmental Protection permit, the various South Florida water management permits, and whatever Martin County required from us at the time. Everyone in this room realizes what these permits entail. They're, they're very intense and, and built into the process are public hearings, public comments, written comments. Agencies can have written comments and different agencies did have comments throughout the process. I can't remember all of them. I remember Fish and Wildlife had a concern, it was addressed. And so after a lengthy permitting process, Lake Point was finally fully permitted and began the build out of the project. 2012 was a very bad drought year in South Florida. The partners at Lake Point began to field questions from hydrologists, from water district people, from locals asking, is there any opportunity to speed up Lake Point? Could we get Lake Point online working sooner than before? Could Lake Point speed up the process of helping replenish the water supply? Could Lake Point clean some of the dirty water as it was supposed to coming out of Lake Okeechobee? When it became apparent that the city of West Palm Beach was only a matter of days away from running out of water, the partners at Lake Point decided that we would attempt to speed the project up to try to help solve some of these problems. We called it the Lake Point solution and we brought a national company american water to help us manage the system and manage the process the idea was to use the various assets at lake point to speed them up and to get the project going and of course always in the background for the partners as well as those who live in the western areas of martin county lake point has been very interested in creating and maintaining jobs in it, uh, what is a historically underserved rural community. So throughout the process, the owners of Lake Point have always been very interested in what's the economic impact in this area, how can we bring jobs? Um, and we're, we're actually quite proud that throughout the 10 years that we've been in business, despite everything that I'm talking about right now, we have had a tremendous positive impact in an area where there are very few businesses. American Water brought so much to the table. They're a huge publicly traded company. They brought all of their, not all, but a bunch of their PhDs and senior management down to Lake Point many times and, and really contributed a lot to the brainstorming on how to make the project better. One of the most interesting that came, things that came out of it is a few of the PhDs had an idea of what we affectionately called the rock garden. But the concept was that limestone would clean dirty waters. 